The new frontier for CSPs is the network edge, with the resulting opportunities to create low latency services with edge computing. Don, thanks for joining us again on Telecom TV. Always good to see you. Welcome, um, Guy. The edge is a vast space. Definitions move around as to you know, how, where the edge is, where edge devices sit and everything. There's also a lot of players competing in the edge space. What's the role of CSPs within the edge environment? Well, I think if you consider the edge to be the customer premises and the device, then the customer owns that in device. But if you consider the edge to be the place where the network has a node, so that might be a cable modem, cable industry, a DSO modem, or an optical um, line termination, then you've definitely got an edge that is very close to the customer. I actually think trying to think of the edge as being somewhere where there's a certain set of attributes that make it interesting from an infrastructure investment point of view. And those, inf those, those attributes I would consider to be latency, bandwidth aggregation, and potentially geofencing of privacy data. So for me, the edge can move according to what the parameters are. See, I find the edge interesting because we're early days and yet there's already dozens of, of, of projects, dozens of open source projects, all looking at the edge in diff different, different ways. Um, We've got Etsy looking at the edge as, 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 as well. Um, where are we in creating the necessary kind of support infrastructure, if, if, if you like, to encourage greater industry cooperation and make sure we head in the right direction? I think the edge has got certain restrictions, right? So the closer you get to the edge of the network, then you have things to consider like space, powering, cooling and also the operational imperatives to send people to do spares and, and repairs at, at the edge. So I think there's a lot of um, angles to that story, which means that there are open source plays um, in, in that space, but I'm concerned that even in open source, we're seeing fragmentation, right? So that's not good for the industry, is it? Um, I prefer to think of things in terms of where, what is the openness uh, and where, where is the boundary of openness and where does openness stop and innovation that is about the vendors and the operators being able freely to innovate over and above where you've set the boundary of openness, right? So if you're an open source community, then of course everybody's piling in with code that everybody can use. So where's the differentiation there? So that's the question. Then, because I've been living in the more, I hate to say traditional, but let's say the documented standards world, right, of Etsy NFV, that's where I've spent a good deal of my recent life um, in, in NCNV, then we consider it the boundary of, of MANO into the northbound OSS environment. So for us, we kept away from that because that's the operational space where operators are very specifically and proprietarily developing their systems. And then I look down towards the, uh, the infrastructure layer and I'm thinking about the, the hardware, so servers, storage and compute. For me, those are things which we want to come from an open ecosystem. And as you get rise further up the stack, then you get more and more into the domain where the operator is differentiating. And it's important to know where that boundary is. And we've done, I think, a pretty good job in Etsy and Avi of setting that boundary. And that applies to Edge as well as everywhere else. So this boundary of, of, of openness, um, is, this, is this something that will just, the market will, will, will decide, it'll arbitrarily happen, or, or do you have to force the issue? The, to some degree, with, when you see fragmentation, then that's not sustainable. So what will happen is the market will decide which activities are most valuable, right? And it will decide those on a number of different, uh, different things. And so for, for me, um, the idea that we can deploy NFV systems almost anywhere for any particular use case without making it use case restrictive has been an overriding consideration for us. So the idea that you can know exactly where to stop standardizing and to allow that innovation to, to take place is one of the things that I, I fret about. Where exactly is that? Um, is, is that? Is that boundary? Then coming back to your, your, your question about what do operators think about it? Well, I think operators have all got different views. It all depends on where they sit in the operating ecosystem, whether a fixed operator primarily or a mobile one or even an over-the-top over enterprise um, operator. They've all got different views. Well, obviously we can't have a discussion with you without talking about NFE. Um, as you say, you spent a, 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 um, a lot of your recent career looking at and, um, and developing and growing um, NFE. What is, what is the role of NFE in, in the edge? Because as you've already said, you've got constraints in, in edge environments, haven't you? Well, I think NFE has got a place at the edge, for, for, for sure. 
But I think that, the, it, again, it depends on the use case, right? So, for example, if you're trying to um, instantiate a network presence at the edge, which, of course, we do, then you will decide that very little choice these days, virtualization is going to be the way it's going to be done, right? Because we need to escape from hardware life cycles and to, to use um, industry standard hardware and then port network workloads onto those. But network workloads may be quite different to over-the-top application workloads. So I actually envisage an edge platform which does both things. And then the challenge for us is, can you hybridize a platform that does both network grade workloads and application workloads. And could we have something in between, like application-aware networking? And what's, how much storage would you need? How much compute do you need? When you engineer networks, those things tend to be quite deterministic, right? You, you dimension a network for a given work, uh, traffic load, typically traffic. But then when it comes to applications, you can't really predict what they will be, right, to some extent. Um, uh, and indeed, CSPs don't necessarily control those. But for me, the edge is an important place to locate applications, or at least instances of applications that run according to demand, because they have an advantage in running at the edge, either through latency or bandwidth or data um, location. Do these factors, um, coupled with the edge, mean that there is still a lot more work to be done with NFV and supporting standards and structures? Well, I think that the industry is beginning to see 5G looming over the horizon very, very quickly. So in order to fully realize the benefits of 5G, you need an agile core. And so everybody for the last two to three years has accepted that the 5G core is going to be a virtualized core. So there's no question about that. Um, and the question then arises, are we ready with the virtualization technologies? And so that you've heard from some of the keynote speakers today that they're concerned about, about that. But I think part of that is simply that we've, we've been going through a massive learning curve, right? Very steep learning curve. But I would say that the, it's a bit like those bit at the end, and it doesn't necessarily take as long as the bit at the beginning, right? A lot of it is planning, get generating consensus, putting in place the experimental platforms where people start to learn, and then we start to bring into um, play some of the skills gaps and some of the organizational, um, let's say, suboptimal organization things that need to be fixed, right? So for me, um, I think we're on the right track, but we've not got much more time to get some of this right. And I think with XCNV, we've delivered, for example, stage three standards, which we didn't set out to do five years ago. But those stage three standards are implementable. And um, yesterday, um, Pierre Lynch from, uh, from Keysight, he presented a tutorial on the test and plug tests that we've done with OPNFV, for example. So joint XCNV and OPNFV plug tests. And we're planning to do joint plug tests with ONAP um, and OSM. So of course, those things will generate more and more momentum behind the sharing of expertise and making progress, I think, at a faster pace than we've done up to now. Because there's no plan B, is there? I mean, you, 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 5G is looming, commercial plans are in, are in place. There is, there, is, there, is, there is a plan, there's a lot of investment at stake. We have to get this right. The core has to be virtualized. We, we need it to work. There's a lot riding on it. There's a lot riding on it, but also what you sense at this conference this, this year um, is that there's a sense of urgency, right? Um, and part of that is driven by real money being spent on NFE, right? So when we started out, it was all R&D driven and people like me you know, were R&D visionaries, as it were. But now you've got hard-nosed operations people putting real euros, real dollars on the table or yen uh, and worrying about the amount of money they're spending um, on, on verifying that the systems are, are first of all working at day one, and then if you heard from uh, Juan uh, Savi this morning from Orange, that they're concerned about how long it takes to integrate a VNF, and how much it uh, costs, and also how long it takes to re restore the system when it falls over. Now I'd like to point out, as you know, my colleague uh, from Liberty Global did earlier on this afternoon, that Etsy studied a lot of these things. And it's not well known that a lot of these things actually are well understood by a small number of people. And what we need to do is to get those understandings more widely propagated. Um, and that there are techniques that probably haven't yet been fully adopted by the cloud software people, which are, are to do with network resilience, right? We do things a little bit differently in the network world than they might be used to do in the cloud world. 
Don, as always, a pleasure to talk to you. Thanks very much for your time today. You're welcome, Guy. Thanks.